Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Jess. And before I get started today, I want to send a special thank you to everyone who subscribed over the last week and a half or a couple of weeks or so. It's been about a week and a half since my last video. And um, I, the channel's reached over 100 last a few days back and now we're at like 169. So I'm so excited. I didn't think anybody would watch my videos. So um, I will send a special thank you as well to the Jack and Howard show who's had me on a couple of their live streams over the past week or so. Um, that's been a lot of fun to do and I hope to do more of that. Um, maybe getting some people on my channel. Um, it'll be a lot of fun. So today I actually wanted to talk about something I mentioned in my first intro video, if you've seen it, um, where I was just kind of throwing everything out there that I wanted to talk about, that this is a hobby channel. I'm just going to just talk about whatever I want. I'm still trying to figure out where the channel will land um, overall as far as consistent format and like regular content, um, but that's for another time. Anyway, but I did mention in that um, the case of a Dr. Amy Harwick, um, who was who was killed in 2020, and there is there are so many documentaries. There's a lot of stories, and um, I understand this is not supposed to be a catch-all documentary rundown on what happened with her. I will link. Um, in, in the description below to my spreadsheet that I made. Dweeb, I know, but it helps me. So hopefully it'll help you too. And maybe you'll find something you didn't know before. So um, so it's not going to be, I'm not going to get every detail. Um, again, CBS did a 48 hours um, episode back in 2022. Very good. They in interviewed Drew Carey. But yeah, if you don't know who Dr. Amy Harwick is, um, you might know her as uh, Drew Carey's ex fiance. Um, they dated for a while. They were engaged from about February 2018 until October 2018. There were a lot of social pressures and you know, being in the spotlight as a celebrity um, partner, um, it put strain on their relationships. Well, you know, we had some problems and I finally just had to call it a day. They did part as, as friends um, and he didn't hear from her until. Uh, literally the day before she was killed. So it's a very sad thing. I'd recommend watching his interview. It's, it's very touching. Actively looking for content about Amy. And I found that the Discovery Channel had a new docu-series. And she, her story was featured in the first episode. And it's actually really good. So I'd watch that too. They, they interview a couple of her very close friends. And um, there was information in there that I hadn't heard before. So check it out. Um, it is called death by fame but getting to our spreadsheets here if you don't know anything about Amy she was raised um, she was adopted and raised in Pennsylvania and ultimately ended up in California breaking into Hollywood and those inner circles of the celebrities um, she had um, reportedly dated Dave Navarro and Marilyn Manson briefly I believe um, prior to Drew Carey but this story centers around a Gareth Purse house, and um, they had dated for a couple of years um, up until around 2011, 2012. Um, at that time, she was going to school. She was getting her education. She ultimately went on to get her um, master's degree and her PhD in psychology. During this time, she was um, supporting herself as a model, um, an event promoter. Uh, she was also... Um, eating fire and dancing, a fire dancer at the Playboy Mansion on a regular basis. And I think she was even a centerfold for Playboy. Um, but that was all to support her actual passion of psychology. So she initially went into it um, thinking that she was going to be doing family and marital counseling, um, and then eventually switched over to sex therapist. Um, and it's a multifaceted field, I'm told. Um, but she also did a lot of work with um, adult entertainment workers. Um, frequently, they suffered from depression and a lot of other issues so she did a lot of work in that in that area um, and I believe that's where she met Gareth when he was working as a photographer at these events um, he was also a computer programmer and their relationship lasted two years or so and um, at the end of the relationship she had filed a couple of restraining orders and um, exited the relationship so I have the timeline here and then I have some details about what was happening up to her death um, there's also articles on the left-hand side that I found useful. There's um, the location, the 2000 block of Mound Street um, was the crime scene location. Um, 
the CBS News timeline, um, I was going to go through that, but feel free to scroll through that at your leisure. This Again, I'm not going to give you the play-by-play -play of what had happened. Most people already know what happened, but overview. Um, so they broke up in 2012. Um, eventually, she met Drew Carey. They broke up um, at the end of 2018. Um, it seems like Gareth was trying to break into a comedy career, and he was awful. Um, he was on the Kill Tony Comedy Podcast at the Comedy Store. They uploaded it on February 16th, right after the murders, uh, murder. And um, I, I don't know when it was actually filmed, but they, they also appeared on another podcast to talk about their interaction and experience with him. Um, it's nine minutes of terrible. So if you are so inclined, feel free to watch that. Um, but she hadn't seen him in about eight years uh, had anything to do with him about eight years when this all went down. So she had seen him at an event um, in January of 2020. It, it was an uh, adult entertainment event. Um, she was there to support. And he was a photographer at the event. And witnesses said that they were off to the side and he was having a meltdown. He was crying. He was like fetal position and she was trying to calm the situation. Um, and then it was only a, not even a month later that... Um, Valentine's Day happened, and she had a normal day. She hung out with her friends. She went to a burlesque, burlesque show that her friends were putting on, and she didn't go to the after party and went to a, a tea tea shop. <laughs> she had tea instead and finally got home around 1 in the morning when she texted her friend. Um, she did have a roommate who was on another level of the home, um, but he wasn't able to inter intervene. Um, it's unclear whether or not Purse House was in her home already or if he was waiting and, you know, pushed her in when she got home. But it was, it was, it happened very quickly. The cops got there around 1 16 in the morning um, when she was already on the ground beneath the balcony. Um, she was transported to the hospital and she was, it was declared dead at 3 26 in the morning that morning. Um, so there was apparently um, camera footage of Purse House ex leaving the property. Um, but the friends also said, we know who did this. She had restraining orders on him. Long story short, he was arrested within hours. And um, he was subsequently bonded out on a $2 million bond, which I don't understand how that could happen, only to be rearrested within another 48 hours. So they had found a syringe with um, a strange unknown liquid in, in the home, in her home. Um, which ended up being a lethal dose of nicotine if it were to have been injected. Um, she had signs of manual strangulation, um, but ultimately it was the fall that killed her. So that's how we got to where we were in 2020. Since then, he has had a slew of court appearances. Uh, COVID really messed off the court's um, schedule, so they were hoping to have a, a trial by 2021. And here we are two years later, but there is some movement. So according to his case summary, um, it shows the all of the different pretrial conferences. He's due to have another pretrial conference in just a few days. Hopefully we're going to see a trial come up soon. And if anyone is in the Los Angeles area and covering this and keeping a pulse on it and is actually planning to attend, I would love to connect with them. Um, I'm not sure if Court TV or Long Crime are going to pick it up, but, you know, it's it's not... A talked about matter and I don't really remember it being a majorly talked about case unless you're like in Southern California. One thing I found interesting though when I was going through the different articles is I found that his father who had died in the July prior to this um, he was also accused of stalking his ex-fiance in recent time to his death and he had multiple restraining orders against him so the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree on this one. I also wanted to um, point out that they do have, they, as in her friends, have a, set up a GoFundMe for a memorial um, to be erected in the Los Angeles area. Um, she, since she was raised in Pennsylvania, she was buried in Pennsylvania, and the, and the cemetery where she was buried doesn't allow for elaborate headstones, it's just the flat ones. Um, and so they, they wanted to create a memorial on the West Coast, where she had so many friends, she was so loved, and she had great success. If you want to check that out, they are really far away from reaching their goal, um, 8,800 of a $250,000 goal. So if you're interested in donating to that, the link is in my spreadsheet. It was encouraging to see that people are still donating and um, 
hopefully the trial will begin and go through the process and get the friends and family um, some closure. Um, it's been a long time coming. So if you're interested in anything in this, uh, feel free to grab it from my description. Um, yeah, if you have any insight, uh, drop it in the comments below. Um, if you've heard about her, let me know. If you haven't heard about her, let me know. Um, yeah, and so I'm going to be keeping an eye on this. And that is all for today. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And hopefully it won't be another two weeks before I put out a video. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. I think about Amy in the most positive ways. Obviously re really beautiful. Like she was smart. She had a PhD, master's degree. She cared so much about helping people. That's a, that was her life's purpose.